Hi, welcome to the Digital Yacht How To video series. In today's video, we're going to be looking at our Pro AIS configuration and diagnostic software. This is the software that we supply with our latest Class B transponders, so that's the AIT 3000. 1500 and also the AIT 1500 N2K which is the NMEA 2000 version and the AIT 2000. So basically if you've got one of those uh, models of transponder in the box would have been a CD and on that CD is the Pro AIS 2 software installer and uh, there's one for Macs and there's one for Windows. The day, one that we're going to look at today is the, the Windows version um, and after you've installed that it also installs the USB drivers for the uh, for the transponders as well um, so when you plug in the USB uh, cable from the transponder and you run the Pro S2 software you should see the AIS Class B transceiver appear here in the drop down list of devices that it can connect to. Now if you've got other COM ports on the PC or other USB to serial adapters then they will also appear here so just make sure that you select the uh, Class B um, transponder and then click connect and you should see determining AIS type flash up briefly there and then it goes away. If that stays there, that determining AIS type, then you've, it's because it can't communicate with the transponder. So just turn off the 12 volt power to the transponder, disconnect the USB, wait a few seconds, plug the USB in, turn on the 12 volts and then you should be able to uh, connect to it by running ProS2 again. So anyway, we're, we're connected so we don't have to worry about that. and. To make the transponder actually start transmitting, we need the all-important MMSI number to be programmed in. So I'm just going to put in, uh, quickly type in digital yacht test and call sign test and the MMSI number, which you need to make sure that you get right. I can't stress that enough because if you get it wrong or you need to change it, then it, the unit will need to come back to the dealer or distributor that has the reset tool that we've got, um, or it might have to come back to Digital Yacht, whichever's easiest. So check the MMSI number, then select the uh, nearest category of, of vessel to the type that you've got. I'm going to click Sailing for my yacht. Um, then you enter in the dimensions of the the boat and these are dimensions in respect to the uh, uh, GPS antenna so wherever you put the GPS antenna you need to have these four dimensions so um, so I'm going to put there 10 um, you need to the, it doesn't accept decimal places so you need to round it up to the next biggest number so uh, let's put two there and two and two so that's that um, what else do we need to set? Well, I won't worry too much about the, the GPS sentences and outputs. Certainly wouldn't touch the board rates. Don't change those. Um, so I think we're good to go. Just double check the MMSI number again and then click Right Configuration. So now it gives us one last chance. Make sure that you've got your MMSI number correct. I, yep, I'm sure that that's correct. And then you click Program. And now it says Configuration Saved to the AIS which is good, that's just what we want to see. The MMSI number is greyed out, so we can't change that. Um, like I say, it would need to come back to a, a dealer or a digital yacht to, to reset that. Um, but all the other things, if you, for instance, got the name of the boat wrong, um, mistyped it, you can change that and just hit right configuration again, and it will save that new data there. Same with the dimensions. So that's the unit configured. Now we go to the Diagnostics tab and well <laughs> while I've been talking it's actually made its first transmission so we're seeing here exactly what I like to see which is a series of green ticks um, in the statistics down here it's received uh, well, 140 odd uh, re position reports from other AS devices on, on its two channels and it's made its first transmission um, now the antenna that I'm using for, for this video is just one I grabbed out of my box and it's not particularly great, I think it's had a pretty hard life and it's only just um, uh, underneath the alarm threshold so so basically um, AIS transponders, whenever they transmit they um, 
check what's called the VSWR, the voltage standing wave ratio. So this is a ratio of the power that is sent to the antenna versus the power that gets reflected back. Now in an ideal world all the power should go out of the antenna into the air but no antenna is perfect and there's always some of that power is reflected back to the transponder. And if that power gets too high, A it means that you're not transmitting as far but also it can potentially, if, if all that power gets uh, reflected back it can actually damage the transponder so it's a very important measurement and it sort of gives you a good idea of how good the VHF antenna is now it's not uncommon for somebody to fit a transponder for the first time and they run this uh, ProS2 software and to find that they're getting an alarm and a very high VSWR reading and that's because you know a lot of cases the VHF antenna at the top of the mart it's been up there for quite a number of years it's a really hostile environment and it's, and it's degraded and basically the the you know it's, it's not tested as uh, every year um, if you like me you never test it so really it's putting this transponder on is the first time that it's actually been tested for many years and it it's not unusual to, to find um, customers fit that and then need, realize they have to fit a new antenna so important measurement VSWR. Um, typically that will be down at 1 to 2 at the most. If it starts going much above 2 it, it's an indication that the antenna is not at its best. If it starts getting more than 5 to 1 then you will see an alarm appear here and the red um, error LED will eventually come on. Um, so yeah keep, keep an eye on that if you're seeing high VSWR readings. Um, so here we've got a sort of a virtual display of, of what's happening on the LEDs on the actual unit itself. Um, you've also got other important things here. The uh, voltage of the, the supply voltage, so obviously that needs to be up you know, 12 volts or more um, and it will actually alarm if it goes down to about, I think it's about 9.8 volts, something like that. Um, you'll get a low voltage alarm. Um, also on this screen you've got the silent mode switch, so I can just click that button and it will illuminate the blue silent mode LED and this indicates in silent mode basically you stop transmitting and all you you're still receiving so if I go to the other vessels I'm still seeing all these um, I'm still receiving targets from all the other AIS equipped vessels around me but they're not seeing me because I'm not transmitting anymore um, as more and more boats are fitting AIS it's becoming more of a uh, of the correct etiquette really to to when it's in good weather when you're an anchor or you're moored, um, to turn off the, um, the transmission, and you can do that with this silent mode switch. Um, or you can actually fit, uh, I think, with the exception of our AIT uh, N2K, all our other transponders have a blue and white wire on the power data cable, and you can fit a traditional switch across there, and when the switch is closed, it goes into this silent mode. So that's um, the silent mode, and like I say, you know, you. you as soon as the weather starts to deteriorate, you know, visibility starts to, to or you're going across a uh, shipping lane, then obviously come out of silent mode and start transmitting again. Um, but it all helps to just reduce the amount of um, AIS traffic that appears on people's chart plotters. Um, so that's it really. I mean, when when a Class B transponder's um, stationary, uh, or the its speed over the ground is less than two knots, then it just transmits every three minutes. So it does, you know, you will see these transmitted messages go up, but they go up quite slowly. Every every three minutes, uh, approximately, you'll see this increase. Um, once you start sailing and you're doing over two knots, then it's every 30 seconds that the unit transmits. And it only measures the VSWR when it transmits. So that's an important thing. So, you know, don't be looking at this number, expecting it to change in real time as you make adjustments to the to the connections and stuff, um, it will only um, happen when this uh, transmit uh, happens and so keep an eye on these statistics here as you see this increase by one, check the VSWR and see if it's changed. Um, so that's about it really, I mean the GNSS status is a, is a useful screen, that is measuring the, the signal strengths from the GPS. Now you know a lot of people um, 
don't like having um, an, another antenna outside and so the AIT 2000 and 3000s that come with a external GPS antenna a lot of people are fitting those down below decks now so and this is quite a good way of just checking that you're getting a good GPS position before you mount the antenna finally and of course the AIT 1500 has a GPS antenna built in so you want to do this sort of test just offer the AIT 1500 up to the final position that you want to mount it in and before you screw it down just run the Prius 2 software and check that you're getting a good GPS um, position fix and good strong signals anything down in the sort of you know, 10 you know, once it starts getting down below 20 getting down to 10 it's not going to get a, a position fix so um, you know, you're looking for good strong signals 20 above ideally 30 or 40 Okay, so I think that is pretty much it. I think the la the only tab I've not shown you there is the serial data. That's really for the, um, you know, it's, it's not really much interest to most of the time. It just shows you the the raw NMEA0183 messages that the actual transponder is is sending out. Um, but unless you've got a copy of the NMEA0183 uh, 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 spec, you can't really make head nor tail of this. And even then, the binary packets of data that come from the AS is a uh, uh, you know you can't read them um you have to feed those into a, a conversion program to work out what they mean so yeah not an awful lot of um use but uh, at least you get the confidence that it's sending out the data okay so to close down pro s2 you just click the disconnect button and then close the program and that's it well, thank you very much for listening to today's video. I hope you found it useful. And if you've got any other questions, please visit our website at digitalyachtamerica.com. Thank you.